So D says, Pew Research just released findings of the 118th U.S. Congress in which they reported that 88% are Christians compared to 63% of the general population. It isn't clear if California's incoming congressman is religious or not, but check this out and tell us your thoughts. Always appreciate D. D does a lot of stuff. Always has great stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So this is that what? Oh, righteous. <laughs> <laughs> I just with the headline. I don't even care where the rest of it goes. Like, awesome. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> that makes me happy. The title says, Why this congressman is using Superman comic for swearing in. That is beautiful. I love it. Great. Yeah. Okay. So what are your thoughts on this? Yeah. So it is, it is common practice in the United States for uh, specifically public officials, public elected officials to swear in on a Bible. This is common practice when it comes to a lot of um, administrative court type things, right? This is what we do technically. And the Supreme Court has ruled on this many times in the past in various ways, that it is not a requirement that one use the Bible specifically. One could use, uh, theoretically, any book that the individual finds to be particularly meaningful and important for their, um, that general, quote unquote, spiritual health, right? Um, so we have had various elected officials in the past do things like, you know, the Tanakh or um, the Quran or, you know, all kinds of different things, right? Um, this, being a Superman comic, I, I don't think we've exactly had anything like that in the past, uh, mm. which I think is awesome. I think it's awesome because even if this individual is not an atheist um, or not, you know, uh, is, is somebody of a religious faith, the fact that they're doing this, I think, helps to normalize being non-religious in this country, because as a non-religious person in this country, you have rights. You have rights. Separation of church and state is not uh, something that is is for specifically non-religious people. It's for everybody, because we all have that right to our personal faith, and we shouldn't have that. We shouldn't have another faith imposed on us by our government. Um, so. Whether or not this person is atheist or not, I don't even care. I just think it's great uh, because it, it does. It helps to set that precedent and just make it more of a normal thing to not be a believer in a God, you know? Yeah, it's just like, but what about the fact that 88% Christians and that doesn't, in Congress, doesn't represent the 63% of the population? Now that, that is, a, is, is definitely, definitely an interesting piece um, in yeah. and of itself. So on that specifically, uh, it's, it's very, very strange how, how this is the case, but in the United States, it is almost a guarantee that if you don't profess a religious faith regularly, mostly Protestant Christian, um, but if you don't do that as a candidate, you pretty much are just not going to be elected. Uh, and that is fascinating. And I think that's one of the big reasons why we're seeing a lot of the problems that we have um, over the last couple of years with the, the rise of Christian nationalism and the kind of breaking down of church state separation and the Supreme Court going against precedents and all that stuff. Um, go ahead. I do think that the 63 percent is for everybody, but the congressmen are older, right? Yes, so, that is. Mm -hmm, that's part so of it. If you, so maybe like it wouldn't be 63 percent if you only pulled eight people that had the same age as Congress. You would probably yeah. be more in line. Correct. Totally, yes. totally agree with that. Um, so that means going forward, yeah. Congress is going to also be like closer to 63% Christian. Right? Hopefully. Which is, hopefully. Hopefully. Which um, it will solve, which will solve the world. The, it, will, it will basically fix everything. everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we are in a place right now in the United States where the average age of um, our elected officials, especially at a federal level, are are going up to to a number that is, you know, a bit higher, um, in my opinion, than seems reasonable. I, I don't think there's really any value in somebody that's been in, you know, the highest levels of government for 30 years, who's approaching their mid 70s. I, I, I don't see what the value is of, of keeping that particular individual. I don't see why we shouldn't advocate for 
somebody new who maybe trains with that person, maybe maybe gains wisdom from that that 30 year veteran. But we do live in a place right now in the United States where the vast majority of those people are on the older side. They are that, you know, 60 plus crowd. And that, like you said, that general population is including uh, so many of the under 25s today that are non-religious, which is great, honestly. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think there is a bit of a culture that our elected officials need to have some religion in the United States. And hopefully in the next few cycles, we can start to kind of kind of wean that down, you know, and just break that stuff down. But it unfortunately you just really can't be elected right now in the U S as somebody, an open atheist being elected to something is, is, is practically unheard of right now, which again is just weird, but that's, hmm. that's where it is. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, mother Mary, Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.